Welcome back. Good evening. It's good to see everybody here again. It's been a day, hasn't it? We've been here all day streaming live to you since 11 o'clock this morning. It's now 5 p.m. here on the East Coast, and it's time to bring this wonderful day with Manfrotto, Low Pro Joby to a close. Sadly, it's got to end at some point, but we saved Dixie Dixon for last. Dixie, thanks for being here. How are you doing today? Hey, great. How are you doing? Doing absolutely excellent. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure to have you here. We're really excited about it. We want to thank our sponsors, Manfrotto, for going ahead and getting this set up. Along with the rest of the day, you know, thanks to Manfrotto, Low Pro Joby for sponsoring all these events that we've had today. We've had so many great creators and creatives on here. So we're really excited about that. If anybody's missed any of that stuff, you can go ahead to the BH live stream website, livestream.com slash BH event space. Check out some of that stuff that you may have missed. As always, if you want to see any of the new stuff that they've released today, go ahead and head to the BH Photo website and you can check out all of the new stuff, some of which I believe Dixie is going to be talking about today. So get excited for that. And, uh, you know, if you have any questions for Dixie, you want to get them in, go ahead on Zoom, drop them in the Q&A tab. If you're joining us here on live stream, Facebook, any of those avenues, please feel free to get any of those questions in the comment section and we'll make sure to get them to Dixie towards the end of this event. But like I told you, Dixie, I don't want to take up any more of your time. Nobody came here to see me. They came here to see you and what you have to talk about. So thanks for being here. Thanks to Matt Frodo again. And uh, I'll see you in a little while. Sounds great. Welcome, everyone. I'm going to go ahead and try to share my screen. Let's see. Here we go. And play. Awesome. OK, let's dive in. Man, it is so great to be back with you guys and B&H. I feel like it was yesterday that I was in your store presenting in person. And it's just so great to be able to be back and be back shooting. And after all this craziness that we've all experienced, photography is such a release. It's such a, an art form. It's a medicine for our souls. And I think it's just a really great idea to get back into shooting and doing what you love. And so I'm going to be talking a lot about that today and huge, huge thanks to Manfrotto for having me on. I have a really, really exciting announcement today um, for some of their incredible new releases. And then I'm also going to be giving away um, a book at the end. So if you have any interest in receiving uh, my book on fashion photography, you can follow me on Instagram. At I am Dixie Dixon, and then I randomly select a winner at the very end of this, and then I will send you a, a signed copy of my book um, and maybe a couple other little things. So there's that. So let's dive in. Today I'm going to be talking a lot about creative fashion photography techniques. And before we get into it, if you're not familiar with me and my work, um, I'm Dixie Dixon. I'm a Nikon ambassador, fashion photographer. Um, I also direct films and commercials, um, advertising, and everything that I do is basically commercially based. So anything that we shoot for clients are, you know, like shoe companies, beverage companies, there's all kinds of different people that we shoot for. It's not just fashion photography. And I've had literally every kind of job you can imagine in this industry. I literally started when I was 12 years old shooting photography and started out with the Nikon FG camera. It was a film camera shooting the sports teams for like a whopping $10 an hour. And, you know, it grew to in college, I ended up assisting a wedding photographer and I really, really enjoyed that. And then I ended up studying abroad my senior year with a world renowned fashion photographer. And that's when I really fell in love with fashion photography and commercial work. And that's what I've been doing ever since. But what was funny was, so I ended up diving in. And when I graduated, I was thinking to myself, so I was a business major. I majored in entrepreneurship. And I figured out, OK, maybe I, I was a little bit scared to dive into photography immediately. So I actually applied for an investment firm job, ended up getting that job. But I was talking to my mentor before I went to work. and. He's like, you know, Dixie, if, if photography is something that you want to pursue for a living, now is the time before you're locked in a lifestyle. And so I ended up calling back the investment firm and turning down that job so that I could then pursue photography for a living. And I haven't really looked back since. So it ended up working out. I always figured that I could fall back on that business degree if I ever had to. But this has been an incredible experience 
doing what I love. I mean, photography is definitely my ultimate passion. It's taken me, gosh, all over the world to shoot with all kinds of different people and animals. And, and it's just been such a fun, fun experience. I shoot a lot of swimwear, um, a lot of commercial work for companies like Nikon. And it's just been such a joy. So these are kind of the sampling of clients that I work with. So they range from jewelry clients, um, commercial clients like Virgin. Um, we even started doing resorts recently. I started doing a lot of shoots for like Marriott um, and a local uh, hotel that this just opened around here called Hotel Drover. Um, I shoot for tequila companies, anything that's basically product based. And so you're kind of showcasing that beautiful lifestyle of what it feels like to use that product or wear that fashion. And that's kind of been my, um, my favorite kind of photography to do. So we have definitely a fun team involved. I don't know about you guys, but if you're following B&H, uh, gear is definitely a huge part of what we do. And this is a little bit, I need to update this gear photo, but it definitely showcases all the hats that I wear. I mainly shoot prime lenses. Uh, I just feel like the primes are, just suit my kind of photography. And I'm primarily now shooting though with the new Z series. So I love the Nikon Z7 II, the Z6 II. Most of the time I'm shooting stills with the Z7 II and then we'll have the Z6 II on a gimbal. Um, I love the Manfrotto gimbal. So we're using that most often on our shoots because most of our shoots now require both stills and video. So we kind of have to be able to do both. And I like to be able to focus on one. I don't like to switch back and forth. So I like to have a dedicated camera for stills and a dedicated camera for video. Uh, so it just works really well. And, you know, I always back up, you gotta back up your work. Um, this is back in the studio, backing up to the G drives. I have, gosh, it's amazing how many terabytes of footage and stills you acquire over the years. It just gets to be enormous. <laughs> so without further ado, this is a very, very exciting launch that I've gotten to be a part of. Manfrotto just launched the most incredible line of bags, the Pro Light series. And I wanted to just kind of run through some of my favorite points of these because, I mean, truly, when you look at all the gear that I take to a different jobs, it's, it, it's incredible how easy it is to become unorganized and you can't find what you need when you need it. So ultimately these bags, these Manfrotto bags kind of serve as the backbone of my workflow and the work that I do. So when everything's organized and together, it makes it extremely easy for me to find what I need when I need it and to create you know, the work that I do. So this particular one, they have some amazing bags. My two, I have two favorites and one is the multi-loader. So this bag, extremely, extremely durable. Gosh, it's incredibly easy to use. Um, I just like how it has so many different pockets and things to um, put things in. I mean, it's amazing how much we acquire as photographers between the memory cards, the batteries, the battery chargers, the camera bodies. It's just, it just gets out of control. So this makes it extremely, extremely easy. They're super rugged. And that's extremely helpful in, in the way that they've designed the bag. They've definitely kept the photographer in mind when they designed these because it makes it so easy to find what you need. So this is my vehicle. <laughs> I have a mini. This is how you pack a mini. Um, it's a little mini Cooper. So you have to pack it very, very strategically. And so I've got, you know, two of the new pro light bags. I have my lighting at the bottom and then the the Manfrotto case in the middle. So a lot of times it depends on when I'm traveling. If I'm just traveling locally, I'll have all my gear in the backpack. If I'm going to be kind of going off road, if you will, so I can't have a roller bag. Um, and then sometimes I'll have the gimbal and another backpack kind of all pre set up, makes it really easy to use. And this is basically the setup for inside the bag. So you can have a bunch of lenses. I like to have two camera bodies with a lens on it. It just makes it easy so I can grab and go as I shoot. And then I've also got this nice top pocket, which you can put a camera up there. So it's very accessible to use when you're on location. So I'm using that a lot and I've just really enjoyed working with it for this past month. And it's incredible just how easy it is to, to grab and go. The material is super durable and it's effective and it's, you can um, put a brain cover of it over it to make it 
extremely um, waterproof, which is good. It can hold tripods on the side if you need it. Sometimes, you know, I use a tripod if I'm taking time lapse or shooting video or something like that. And then other times not, but it just depends on what the job is. And that's what's so interesting about my industry is every job is so completely different and it has different needs as far as gear goes. So this kind of gives me that leeway. So this is that top pocket. So you can instantly pull out your camera, use it. If you'd rather use that top pocket for lenses, you can also use that as well. And it fits three lenses. It's really nice when you've got these new amazing mirrorless cameras because they you know, are so lightweight and it just makes it so much easy on our backs, which, you know, as a woman photographer, I definitely um, need that. You know, it's, I'm, I'm not this one of these big buff guys <laughs> trying to carry all this gear. So I got to keep it pretty lean. It's also got that front pocket for your phone, which is extremely useful. And then the the shoulder straps are really comfortable. I found when I was hiking around, it, it felt like, you know, it just didn't, it didn't feel super heavy. They've got a lot of padding on the back and the way that they've designed it. So I was really quite impressed with this new series and I'm excited to use it on more shoots, pockets for memory cards. It's just made so perfectly. Um, so I go for that performance, the durability, and just ease of use, I think is the biggest thing on these new bags. So I'm excited for you guys to, to try them out, to use them and see how it works in your workflow. So I wanna talk a little bit about personal projects. And, you know, in these crazy times, there's been a lot, I feel like a lot of darkness and, and with photography, photography for me, it's medicine and it allows me to express myself and bring my visions to life and to have something to focus on that is light that's sort of out of that interesting darkness that we've all been experiencing with these times and it's just it's such a great outlet so I would definitely suggest if you guys you know are feeling down or whatever it is photography can really brighten your day it can get you focusing on something that is is positive and so that's what I've been doing I've been focusing a lot on personal projects in addition to my, my client work um, I haven't been traveling as much lately, but, um, you know, it's been great because I've been able to focus on this personal work and I've been able to work with these amazing models like this. Is, this giraffe's name is uh, Gerald. Incredible, incredible model. I got to work with him and Carson on this shoot and it was just such a dream. I'm I'm loving doing these shoots where you mix models with these beautiful animals and you can really capture their connection. And keep in mind that all of these are shot like the model with the animal. They weren't photoshopped together or anything like that. Now there was a fence in the background that we had to edit out um, obviously, but it just creates this real beautiful mood. And it's kind of like that spirit animals. It's capturing that spirit, that essence of these animals. And it's just interesting to, to create with them because this animal, Gerald, he was such a ham, like he wanted to be in front of the camera. He's actually an orphan giraffe that um, was saved by the owner and he brought him to the sanctuary and now takes care of him. And now Gerald has a whole family of giraffes. He just recently had a new baby. So they have been just incredible to work with. And, you know, I shot these with the, I believe the Z7 and just the 85 millimeter lens. So keeping it very simple, these are all natural light. Um, with animals, you have to be extremely careful not to use too much lighting as far as strobes and whatnot, because it can kind of spook the animals unless they're trained for it. And um, we use some graham crackers to get him to really... <laughs> Um, kind of get into the shoot. You can see he's sticking his tongue out here at Carson. Uh, it's just a really fun experience. Um, this zebra, is, his name is Zach, and he was full of personality. He was very interesting. He was very cool. And what was funny is I didn't realize how short he was going to be because the model is so tall. She's six feet tall, almost. <laughs> Callie's really tall, especially with heels on. So when we showed up for the shoot, I didn't realize how short he was going to be, but it ended up making for some really fun photos. And, you know, I always like to sort of have the animals inspire the wardrobe. So we had this sort of zebra print uh, fabric that was really cool. 
And these are all just natural light and just capturing that uh, connection. And we found that the animals really enjoy it. They, they get to do their thing and they kind of work the camera like the models do. So they've, uh, you know, being a part of the sanctuary, they're just so well taken care of and, and spoiled, if you will. So it's really important when you're working with animals to try and bond with them before the shoot. So I came beforehand and really kind of you know, petted them and kind of got to know them. You can't bring fear into the equation because they can feel that. So you have to have a very calm energy about you when you go into these kind of shoots. You also want to not use perfume, you know, fragrance and things because that can kind of spook them or make them feel not um, good. So you got to just be careful about those little things and just, you know, very slow movements around animals, no sudden jerky movements and things. And just keeping that in mind and getting those detailed shots. And then always another thing to keep in mind when you're working with animals is to, you have to think about if you're shooting them with a model, you know, I'm shooting at like F5.6, F8, just in case, so I can get both the model and the animal in focus. And then the, the background kind of blurs out really nicely. Um, Cause usually I like to shoot portraits at like 2.8. This one was shot at 2.8. And then it blurs out the background so nicely, but when you're working with animals and they're constantly moving, you want to shoot at a uh, more closed down aperture so that the animal and the model is in focus. So that was, you know, something to keep in mind. And you can create these beautiful just kind of moments. And this was actually an interesting shoot. Uh, Landry, there was this guy, so in I'm in Texas, obviously. And so you get, we get a lot of horses. We have a lot of cowboys. And the longer that I stay in Texas when I'm not traveling, I feel like my work gets more and more Western. But there was a man walking by while we were shooting. And I think that he had had a little too much to drink. And Landry just asked him, hey, can I shoot some pictures on your horse? So we sort of stumble off his horse, let Landry, you know, shoot these pictures. So we hadn't even planned to use the horse in this particular image. And I think we shot for almost 45 minutes and he just kind of stood there watching us. <laughs> so it was a really, really fun, fun shoot. And this was actually at the very end of the day, the light had almost completely gone away, but it's amazing how you can still create some great, beautiful black and whites um, at these times, especially with the new, you know, Nikon mirrorless is just incredible what you can create. And then we also had a, a fan to kind of create that moment with their hair. And, you know, it's just fun. I love black and whites because I feel like you get more to the soul of the person and they just create this instant beautiful mood in your photographs. So that's kind of what I've been doing. And this Longhorn, oh my gosh, his name is Flash. And we actually could use Flash on these shots because he was used to it. He is like a professional a professional longhorn, if you will. So we ended up, you know, doing all these different shoots with Roxanne. She's has, she's fearless. That's why I chose her for this particular shoot. And uh, she just brought this amazing energy. And we did some, I love the color versions. I can never decide between color or black and white, but it was just an amazing um, location. You know, the the Longhorns were so calm and collected and, you know, Roxanne brings her really cool energy to the shots and we just had really beautiful light. You know, I love natural light. These are shot in natural light and she kind of has that urban cowboy kind of vibe in these particular shots and uh, just a really interesting shoot. You know, that wardrobe, we just brought that. I was and buying things off of Etsy and, you know, saddle shops. And I do a lot of shopping and stuff for for personal work and we definitely have a small team for these type of shoots um, but it's not like a big production when you're working for an actual client so that's what I love about personal work because you can really just go out and create and this was kind of a postcard an ode to Fort Worth that I wanted to bring to life and so we got her in the middle of the stockyards I don't know about you guys, but in Texas, I mean, they literally have a cattle drive every morning at 11 a.m. in the stockyards. And so you can go by and capture that and, and watch it. So we ended up showing up before that. This is like, at, you know, early in the morning that we started shooting. And I was really frustrated because there was all these cars that were already parked, you know, waiting for it. And so I had to kind of get to a super low angle and shoot up, which actually ended up working out good. But it was this was one of the main shots that ended up turning out um, for this particular shoot. 
and you know all the crazy fashion and we had a wardrobe stylist and a hair makeup artist for this particular shoot with flash uh the longhorns so it was definitely fun and you know i'm doing these all the time lots of different personal projects and it's just been such a cool experience so camera setting wise like i said i tend to keep if it's portraits i tend to keep it pretty wide open like f3.5 um, sometimes i'll even shoot it f14 if i've got a 14 lens on there depending on the concept if i'm shooting jewelry i'll shoot it say f8 or f11 because i want everything in focus um, shutter speed wise i tend to keep it pretty much you know one two fiftieth because I move around a lot when I shoot. So I'm a little bit, I could get a little bit blurry if I'm gonna shoot at like 1 60th, um, just cause I'm such an animated shooter and I'm, I bring a lot of energy to each production. Um, I tend to keep my ISO as low as possible. So you get the really, really beautiful files. And then I'm always, you know, focusing on the eyes and obviously these new mirrorless make it super easy to do that with the eye autofocus. So, I'm always doing that. And then lens selection wise, I only use prime lenses, like I said earlier, and I'm actually loving, um, you know, the new 85 is extremely beautiful. I've been shooting them at that a lot lately, the new uh, mirrorless Nikkor. And so I would say that would be the minimum focal length that I would shoot a headshot if I was just shooting beauty photography. Um, you can also go as long as like 180 or 200 millimeters to shoot a headshot because you can see how it has this beautiful compression effect where it just blurs your background out really nicely. It makes all their features look super flattering because if you're gonna try shooting a headshot with a 35, it just tends to distort all of her face. Like it makes her chin look larger, it makes her forehead look larger. So it's just not as flattering of a shot. So I only tend to use the 35 for if I'm shooting like a cool, cool background, cool scenery, and then I have the model right in the middle um because then it just brings in that whole scenery it wouldn't be like a tight headshot so just keep that in mind when you're choosing lenses and uh, you'll come up with some really nice results so if you have like a 70 to 200 lens i don't even own that lens but most people own that one because i don't really have many zooms but you could zoom all the way into 200 millimeters take your photo and it's just going to have a really really beautiful effect so this one was shot that way and you can see the difference in the lenses. The one on the left was shot with a 85. The one in the center was shot with a 105. And the one on the right was actually shot with a 50. So the nifty 50. <laughs> um, so you can just see how the compression works and how it really changes the look of your imagery. So if you're looking for a different look, try a different lens and see what you might come up with. And that's also with the 85. I just, I've been loving that 85 lately. And that was shot with the 105, nice portrait. I love capturing reflections are really beautiful. And, you know, just capturing those moments. I'm just always, lately I'm going towards the black and whites. I'm not sure why, it's just, they're moody and beautiful. And, you know, even lately I've been working with this local designer. He's a amazing couture designer. And we've been doing a lot of shoots in studio. So I not only shoot on location, I would say I shoot more on location than I do in studio, but I still do a lot of studio work. So we ended up set, shooting in this gorgeous location with this great wall set up that they had. And shooting white on white is a little bit tricky to light. So you have to, it took us about 30, 45 minutes to kind of fine tune it. We ended up using two lights, one for the main light and then one for fill. And it just creates like a nice soft shadow in the back just slightly. So here's kind of the setup. It's nice when shooting gowns to have the tripod in studio. This is the Manfrotto 190 Go tripod, super lightweight. And it's extremely helpful for shooting that kind of stuff. And yeah, this dress was just gorgeous. You can actually take the bottom feathers off and it turns into a short dress. And so, man, this designer, he's, he's a complete rock star. I love his stuff. And it's really fun to shoot designer gowns because they just so artful and so beautiful. And then here's another setup that we did with some of his other gowns in studio. We've got, um, you know, just, we ended up just using one light. And then the other one is actually just a focus light because it was pretty dark in that studio. And this is with a shot that we ended up with that. And man, you can create such movement with hair. And a lot of times we'll use a hair fan for this look. And I ended up creating this 
you know, the three in, in Photoshop, obviously. Um, and I kind of did that by accident, but it ended up looking really cool. So I just kind of play and see what, what looks cool. And you've got some nice S curves with the gowns and Land Landry rocked it. She just uh, made Miss Teen Texas. And so she's super excited, really fun model to work with. And here's the basic setup. We did a lot of different uh, looks this day and I'm still working on editing all of the photos. And you know you can see how you get that nice movement on the hair. It's it's so easy to do, and I cannot recommend this more. Is if you you don't want to spend you know a thousand dollars on a very fancy hair fan, you can go to Home Depot and grab a leaf blower, <laughs> a battery operated leaf blower. It's I like the Makitas; those are great. And then you just have your assistant or makeup artist just kind of hold it up and create some nice movement with the hair. So that's a really good tip of the you know, tool of the trade in fashion photography to create movement. So we use these on every single shoot um, just to create that nice movement in the shots. So I definitely, definitely recommend it. It's definitely a, a huge part of fashion photography. And then sometimes we'll end up with these crazy setups. You know, this all looks very metallic. I was liking the, you know, the white on white and the metal on metal just has a really striking effect. And this gown was just gorgeous. It was made out of all of these sequins and they almost all look like metal. You capture her, like when I'm shooting, I like to create these nice moments where you have beautiful S curves. And, you know, this model was just awesome to work with. I mean, that is a really crazy gown. And what's so funny is people don't realize, you know, this background, you can also find at Home Depot, it's the insulation board and it just looks super textured. It looks super metallic and it's just fun to work with. So you can find some amazing things to shoot um, just in local craft shops and Home Depot and stuff like that. I like getting kind of creative with that. So it's a, it's good fun. So when you're working on location, you know, it's interesting trying to pack to work on location. I do so many location shoots. This was in Provence, France, uh, just such a beautiful, beautiful place. Um, this is actually local. Um, this was in Brazil. So we've kind of been all over and packing for these places is so tricky because I never, ever like to try to um, pack everything um like when you have to check your luggage i never like to check any of my gear so you got to kind of pick and choose what you check and then what you um, put on the overhead bin so i always try to carry all of my camera gear on the plane so i'm with me so i have my camera bags my backpack and those are the two pieces of equipment that i usually have when i travel and that's a really big big part of it so that's when this bag comes to mind. The ProLite front loader is my favorite travel bag to pair with my um, Minfrotto roller bag because it has a really nice design. It's, it fits my laptop really nicely. And then it also, you know, it loads in the front. For some reason, I like front loading camera bags the best, but they also have some back loaders available if you like those better. I just, for some reason, like the kind of front loading type of bags. Um, but it's nice because it has a way that you can fasten it to the front of um, the bag so you can travel with it. It has a little a slot that you can put it on there and travel and roll with it and just be super mobile. And it just makes traveling so much easier because traveling is, is definitely always an adventure. It's, it's tricky. And so you have to be very careful about how you pack your gear so it doesn't get destroyed on the way to the shoot. So that's really, really important. And it's definitely an art that I've, I've learned over the years and I've gotten better at over the years uh, to use. So this is how I pack this particular bag when I'm going out on location. And so I've got the two camera bodies. It has so many lenses. You know, you can fit DSLRs as well as mirrorless. Um, both fit just fine. It's, it's incredibly spacious uh, for how compact the bag is. So it's pretty awesome. It also has an M guard and this is their new kind of dividers that they've used. So it apparently takes, uh, it's like a huge shock absorber and it also allows you uh, more space. So they're a lot thinner than some of the other uh, sections. So you're allowed um, more to have more gear in your bag than you would have with other kinds of dividers. 
And so I use this a lot and it was amazing how many lenses I can fit into this bag just because the dividers were so small, but yet so durable and then allow that resistance to shock. So very helpful, especially for you sports photographers and things like that. And uh, yeah, it's just been a really fun experience to try, try these out for the past month. It has a TSA padlock for extra security. You know, you can't go wrong with that. And then also the zippers are metal, so they're super durable. I don't know about you guys, but I always struggled and would break zippers and would have to buy new bags because of that or get them redone, which can be expensive. So the metal definitely is very helpful, really beautiful. And then obviously the top has a nice pocket for my passport. Can't go wrong with that. And uh, yeah, I've just been really quite impressed with these bags and I'm going to continue using them on all of my productions. So they've been just awesome. Um, let's talk a little bit about posing secrets that I use. So as a fashion photographer, a lot of people think that so much of what I do is posing, but actually I would say the one thing that you want to do if you want to get into fashion is don't do as much posing. And the reason is, is when you pose someone, especially a model that's professionally trained, it tends to look super uh, posy and not natural. And even when you're working with real people, I don't pose them as well because I like to create these effortless moments where I kind of shoot through moments in order to bring to life their kind of natural posing, natural beauty. And, you know, in working with Kathy Ireland, she obviously knows how to pose. That's very helpful, but I kind of want to bring out and shoot through those moments to create those, those times when they actually look natural, like they don't look like they're posed. So there's a lot of different ways that I do that. And some of the, the ways are gathering inspiration. So I always look for inspiration so that I can show my client, whoever it is I'm shooting, to show them kind of the, some of the different poses that I'm looking for. And then as I'm shooting, I love to look out for shapes like triangles, S curves, um, you know, these different shapes that they're creating with their body. And I basically will tell them to kind of switch poses or just do slight movements every, you know, couple seconds and then I'll click and I actually shoot more frames than I end up needing. But that shooting through moments is al allowing me to get the kind of effortless shots that I'm looking for. So I may burn 50 digital files in order to get those moments that I really love. And it's interesting because I find that when the models hear that click and they hear that I'm clicking, they feel that they're doing a good job. And so it sort of builds their confidence as they're shooting. And so it makes them bring out their confidence, you know, as I shoot. And it's just a really important way to get into it. So this is for, for instance, for a recent beauty, beauty brand, they wanted super powerful kind of shots and power poses for these women. And so I ended up coming up with this inspiration board here. This is a sample mood board. And I create these actually online as well as I use a cork board um, on set. I'll print these all out and then I'll show the models these before I go into every production. And it just um, creates that, that environment where the model can see or your subject, even if they're not a professional model, they can see kind of the vision and then they're able to really get into it and kind of bring their own personality to each of these poses because everyone has different body types. Everyone's going to photograph differently and you can kind of guide them through that basically. So working with Kathy was so much fun. Kathy Ireland, she's has, she's incredibly successful. She has 21,000 products in the market and she started out as a Sports Illustrated swimwear model. And I think she was in like 13 consecutive issues of Sports Illustrated. So she's definitely done a lot of modeling she's she definitely knows what she's doing so I didn't really have to do a lot of posing with her but we definitely showed her some good inspiration of what we we're looking for this is for the AIDS foundation that she works with um, creating those beautiful moments um, with the Elizabeth Taylor AIDS foundation for their billboards and whatnot and it's just interesting creating these and just giving people things to do in photographs that's like a huge part of what it is to get these natural moments. This was for Virgin and they wanted people having fun at the office, sort of exaggerated. So I would literally have them dancing in their chair, giving them an action. We had tons of music playing. You know, I tend to dance a little bit as I shoot if I'm trying to get my client to dance because a lot of times your subjects will actually mirror your energy. 
So for instance, especially if you're working with kids, you really have to bring a lot of energy to the shoot in order for them to bring energy into your photograph. So keep that in mind because you really have to bring the kind of energy that you're wanting. And if it's more of a, you know, kind of shot like this, it's a moody James Bond type of look, you know, I'll tell him that that's the look that we're going for. And then he's actually creating some nice triangles with his arms and it's just creating these moments. And I love the walking and talking shot. I love to tell them, Hey, why don't you guys hold hands? I just want you kind of in your moment, walking and talking and you kind of get the beautiful airplane in the back and just setting this up to where there was actually, a, this was in an airplane hangar, obviously. So I'm at the edge of one side of the hangar and the light is just pouring into my subjects right here as they walk towards me. And I shoot a ton of frames and then ended up with a couple of favorites where they look really natural, really believable. And that's kind of how I tend to shoot. So I'm not one of those photographers that like will spend 10 minutes and create one shot I'll create the scenario and create the environment for the models to live in. And then they bring their own personality to it. And that's really how I create the natural type of looks and the moments in these photographs. So it's definitely a dance and it, and it takes practice, but if the more that you do it and the more you guide your subjects, the better at it that you'll get. And I'm continuing to do that and practice and, um, it's just really fun. Even giving them a prop is a good idea. I'm such a big hat person. I'm always wearing hats and shoots. And so I'm always giving them a prop because it just kind of, it's like almost like a security blanket and they can use that prop and try different poses and, and whatnot. And so it kind of creates that. And, you know, creating movement is really beautiful with the garments. If you've got like a long train, or a bridal veil, you can have your assistant throw it up in the air and create the moments where it's kind of flowing and you create some nice movement in your shots. So we actually had our assistant grabbing this 20 foot train at the bottom and just shaking it back and forth. So it looks like she's actually moving when she's actually standing still. So this just creates those natural looks. And obviously, you know, working with animals, I do that so much and, uh, you know, looking for these triangles in your shots and these S curves, you can see that she's kind of creating an S curve with her body. You see the nice triangle created with her ladder and just looking for these things as you shoot because it kind of guides the viewer's eyes throughout the frame, basically, and it, and it basically showcases and connects with the viewer even more. So always fun to shoot that stuff. So lighting, let's get into lighting a little bit. And I love lighting. I feel like lighting is really and truly the love language of photography. And it's just such a beautiful, like you can really make someone in their skin really glow with lighting. And one thing that I do is I like to overexpose my skin tones by about a third to a half a stop. So it brings out that glowiness. So I may not shoot it at what the meter is saying to shoot. I may overexpose just slightly to bring out those beautiful natural skin tones. So I do that on almost everything I do and it just makes the lighting look super flattering, super soft. With women, I tend to create either backlight or butterfly light. And with men, you can kind of get away with some using some side light because it brings out some texture in their skin and everything. And then I always try to shoot near sunrise and sunset, you know, obviously find shade midday, and then using that backlight can be really effective. So, this is that backlight, and this is actually shot with a very old lens, the Nikon 180 lens, which has so much lens flare because it doesn't have the nano coating of the newer lenses, but it creates kind of a, a beautiful fashion type filter. So I, I use that fairly often as well for headshots. And then again, that's that kind of side lighting with his abs. Um, you can see how the side lighting bring out, brings out that beautiful texture. And with men, you can totally get away with that, like that direct side lighting. It can tend to be super harsh, but with men, they look kind of good, rugged and bringing out that texture. And then here's another way that we love to light. Like we'll have the sun coming from the back a little bit, and then we'll just use a bounce board. This is this silver insulation board that we bounce back into the subject to create that kind of beautiful, soft textured light. And it just creates that softness with her skin and her hair. And it's just a really beautiful way to, to light. So I definitely recommend that if you don't have a reflector on hand, you can go buy 
and get some, you know, use silver board, silver poster board. There's so many ways to do it to create what you're what you're looking for. So we use these all the time on set for for multiple reasons for reflector reflectors for backgrounds. You know, they're great great tools. So and then window light. I love window light lately. Man, it's just so beautiful. Like if I have my back to the window and I shoot in towards my subject, that light is just going to wrap around my subject really beautifully. And just getting that cool movement on the hair and, you know, using the window just, man, there's something moody and beautiful about it. So this is the window is from the right side and I'm shooting straight into that wall and it kind of creates a shadow on her right side of her face. But the light is so soft and diffused that it doesn't bring out too much texture you know, in her skin, it's just kind of right on that garment and bringing out that dress. And then always, sorry, there's a fly in my room. <laughs> um, and then obviously this is shot exactly the same lighting, natural light. And then we used a crystal at the bottom of the lens to create that kind of cool effect. Just really beautiful. And then, you know, with strobes, I like to keep it pretty simple. Um, sometimes we'll shoot through a cool gobo, like we created this type of look by shining a light through a keyhole and created that kind of keyhole type of look on this. And you can see just how crazy detailed these shots are. It's incredible. And just the skin tones and, and whatnot. Most of the strobes shots that I use are pretty simple. We'll usually, usually use one or two lights, keep it pretty easy and just create these type of looks. Um, even outside, if we want to create that look where it's more natural, we might use two lights, one for a backlight for the hair and then one for a front light. And it kind of creates that simple, iconic, natural light type look. And then sometimes we even add gels. This was for a new Western magazine. So we had a blue gel in the back. And then for the main light, just we had a normal um, beauty dish on it, I believe. And it just creates this nice look, very Western, very much Western vibes in uh, my shots lately. And then obviously, if you want to create a real moody look, you can also add a fog machine. So I use those pretty often in shoots. You know, you get these from the party store and it just creates like, for instance, this was all done in camera. So you get those nice rays of light coming through that are just so beautiful. And uh, it's just the fog brings out that lighting, which is just incredible. So I definitely recommend playing with fog machines and see if you can get some cool shots like that. Definitely create a really nice look. And then a lot of the editing that I've been doing. So I, I do most of my editing, I export via Capture One, and then I will basically do some kind of basic skin edits, just keeping it pretty simple. Um, sometimes I'll outsource the skin and then I love to do split toning. So basically that's where you will tone your shadows and then tone your highlights. So a lot of times I like to tone my shadows purple or blue, and then I tone my highlights sort of this orangey yellow type color, and it kind of creates a really fun look. So this has been a lot of what I'm doing lately in fashion photography. And I've actually got some, I do this through both Photoshop and Skyloom Luminar software. So I think there's some presets that I created. I did create some presets that are out there if you guys are interested in downloading those um, on Luminar's website, but it just creates a real beautiful fashion effect. So man, it's just amazing to me how photography, like if it's something that you're into, definitely pursue it. It's something that you can do for a living. And if this is something that you love, I just I hope that you go for it because it definitely is my ultimate passion and it's just been such an incredible experience working um, in this industry and meeting so many incredible people in this industry and you know Manfrotto has really been the backbone of keeping all my gear together so I can really do what I love and I'm just uh, I'm very excited about their launch their pro light series of bags has been the best that I've worked with so I hope you guys will check them out because they're awesome and this has been so much fun. I've just so enjoyed, um, you know, hanging with you guys. I would love to hear if you have any questions today as well. Here's the, the full line of bags if you wanna check these out. I currently have the multi-loader and the front loader. And those are my two particular favorites. I just, I loved working with both of those and they kind of keep me, you know, settled, my gear organized so that I can do what I love. 
and um, it's just been such an amazing experience. So at the end of this, I will, um, after we do some questions, I would love to pick a winner for the book. So if you want to do a follow over on Instagram, I will um, go randomly choose someone on there. So um, anyways, um, Scott would love to hear if y'all have any questions or anything like that. <laughs> yes, excellent. Dixie, thank you so much for, for being yeah. here and for, you know, sharing all of your absolutely wonderfully beautiful images i mean I, I i was watching through everything and i was just I, I was captivated by all the images you create and the beauty Aww. you can you can really see everything come through so you know i mean Thank keep you. Do, keep doing what you're doing right <laughs> <laughs> you're doing something absolutely amazing and uh you know we appreciate Aww. it we appreciate you being here we appreciate man frodo for you know setting this up sponsoring the event and sharing some absolutely. time with us you know sharing sharing the bags as well you know i a little a little known fact most people don't know this about me but actually when i started here at bnh one of the uh the places i got my start was actually in the bag section of the store so so i've actually uh experienced manfrotto bags from their inception from when they started to now and it's it's been so even just this new launch seeing everything that they've released and how how much they've changed and shifted, you know, along the way. And now, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm one of those people who I need a bag for every single situation. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. You, you, you feel my pain on that, right? You know, my, my, my family doesn't get it. They're always like, dad, why are you bringing home so many bags? And it's like, because you know, there's a, there's a different bag for every single situation. And yes. sometimes I just want to go out and carry, you know, one camera, one lens, or maybe I want to go out and carry all of my gear, maybe my skateboard with me, some of that stuff. So you know, it's great to see the lineup. And I, I love the fact that they've kind of, you know, toned down sort of that photo look that we've grown so accustomed to. And now, you know, right. they're really stylish and fashionable. You know, you could wear that out. I, I think if I was going on a business meeting or something like that, I could wear it outside. And yeah. Not ridiculed, you know, <laughs> yeah, have some, something, something super high viz that people are like, oh, that guy, that guy's got a camera. Let's get him. <laughs> exactly. It's a little bit incognito because it could kind of be a, a bag for anything yeah it looks like from the outside yeah exactly they, and they're so durable i mean it's just incredible i mean mine are already dirty from taking them out but, <laughs> <laughs> but that's but that's what's supposed to happen and that's exactly. the good thing exactly <laughs> that's so so true you know it's just one of those things <laughs> yes yes so let's jump into the q a um what's your personal opinion regarding the 105 macro for portraits and also maybe in the personal outdoor shoots yeah, it's a great lens. I've I have had the 105 macro in my bag for gosh, since almost since I first started. You know, I started out with the 50 millimeter and then I think I had the 180 next. And I think my next purchase was the 105 macro for doing those macro shots. So it's a great portrait lens, even for headshots. And it's also really great for really tight beauty and jewelry. It's really pretty much a, a must-have for fashion photography, I'd say. Um, just for the different kind of work that that you're doing and that it requires for the different textures and getting those really cool macro type of shots. So I definitely recommend that lens, especially for fashion photography and product. There you go. And if you need a place to buy it, you know, b &H Photo <laughs> always has has your, your connection to yes. buying gear. So, you know, check <laughs> us out, at, you know, b and And, you know, you could see you could see the 105 macro. You could see all the bags that Dixie talked about today. You can see all the, the new Manfrotto products that have been released. So check it out, head to the to the website. That's my plug for our website for today. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are the best. <laughs> um, so Joe, Joe, Joe is joining us here on Facebook and wanted to know, you know, you mentioned you were using the Z6, the Z7. Are you planning in the future any plans on moving on to the Z9? What's your what's your take on that? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I can't wait for that one to come out. I'm simple, excited. simple, easy answer right there. Very excited about it. <laughs> yes. Wonderful. So, so going over to Zoom again, David wanted to know, you know, we spoke a lot about your photo projects and, yeah. you know, still images, but have you also been continuing your video work as well? 
I have, and gosh, Zoom makes it so tough because I would love to share some of the new video work that I've been doing, but definitely video is a big part of what I do. And I think it's gonna be a bigger and bigger part um, just because video is so, so important. All the clients want video now. Um, and it's definitely, it's, it's weird to me, but I find video actually somewhat easier than stills to be, because I mainly do the directing. Um, and so you're able to direct the shot and you have a, a camera operator to, to do his thing and you can kind of direct him and direct the lighting and the, the personality and the, all of that stuff. So that's a good question. I just, I love video and adding those sound elements. So I wish I could have shared that today. They just don't play well on Zoom. Zoom doesn't like video. <laughs> Definitely, definitely. You know, you know, that's that's the thing about Zoom is that, you know, as a, as amazing as it is and as wonderful of a tool as it is, unfortunately, right. you know, it definitely definitely degrades the quality of, of stuff like that. So, you know, that's that's just what we have we have here to, you know, work with. So uh, you know, talking about, you know, all the creative projects you've worked on. And obviously they, they span a great range and, you know, you're working with a lot of different companies and things like that. So they've got their, their vision and obviously they hire you because they believe you can deliver that, that vision, which is great. How do you, how do you kind of come to terms with that? How do you use the inspiration that you have, you know, on your end and kind of collaborate together with them to create something that's cohesive? Yeah, that's a very good question. With personal work, it's so fun and it's so easy because you can just go out and create. You don't have a client breathing down your neck, you know, wanting certain things. And so it really is, it really is a dance. A lot of times I'm working with ad agencies that have a certain vision. And then they're also working with a client who wants their certain things. So sometimes they're at odds with each other. And so you kind of have to, to just shoot a little bit of both in order to get both what they want, because if you don't get what the client wants, they're ultimately the one paying the bills. <laughs> so you want to get what the client wants, but you also want to get what the ad agency wants as well for their, you know, different marketing tools and the things that they're going to be putting out. So it definitely, it is a dance. I always try to capture what they're looking for. And then at the end, if we have a little bit of time, I kind of create my own vision at the end. And I like to create that at the end. And a lot of times that's what they end up choosing because they hadn't seen it that way or, you know, they didn't see my vision um, at the beginning and they're like, oh, wow, that really came to life in that way. So I like to do that at the very end to try to get in mind. So that kind of has, they, I get like to give them a lot to choose from because you just never know. They need stuff for billboards. <laughs> they need stuff for magazine covers. Um, there's just so many different crops and things, social media. It's just insane. The amount of stuff they need these days. Yeah. And, and, and that's that you, you, you hit the nail on the head because that was going to be my next question. Is oh, you, nice. you, do, do you ever, you know, just kind of take advantage of that time and, and shoot some stuff for kind of personal usage, yes. which, you know, if, if, if you have that opportunity, that's great. <laughs> Definitely. As long as there's still light, if we're out on location, we, I mean, I'm one of those crazy photographers. If there's still light outside, we are shooting. I mean, we'll go for 12, 14 hours. I just, I love it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. long time, long time viewer over here, Matt Spinetta from Facebook joining us. Thanks, Matt, for tuning in. We missed you. Great to have you back. Uh, wanted to know that he noticed that you use a lot of silver reflection. Are there any tips or tricks on feathering to achieve, you know, that look in the examples early, late in the day? Okay, so say that one more time to capture so, capture. so any tips or tricks on feathering to oh. achieve the look? The examples early late in the day yeah a lot of times i will take a few different exposures if i want to get a beautiful background and then i want a little bit more light on the model's face um, and that is when it's very helpful to have a tripod and so that you can kind of blend some of those exposures a little bit and create some of those shots so i definitely do that pretty often but it is amazing how when i haven't done that how you can still go back to the raw file and bring back in some of those highlights and bring in some of those shadows and still create that nice kind of feathered type of look. Um, so I do that pretty often for sure. Great. And so yeah. Genevieve is coming to us from Facebook as well. Thanks for tuning in, Genevieve. Yeah. Uh, this is more, I guess, I guess this would be kind of personal, kind of, you know, opinion. 
you know, in terms of the backpack for doing street photography, say in another country other than the U.S. Yeah. You know, what's, what's your opinion on that? How do you feel about that? You know, do you think that it would be a good fit for that? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. It's very incognito. I mean, it could be a backpack for anything. And, you know, when going through airports and stuff like that, people don't really know what's in it. So it's kind of an amazing tool. And it's really nice. Like the multi-loader allows you to, to also load it from um, the front. And it also allows you to load it from the side as well if you want to make it like a messenger bag. So you can just pull your camera out, start shooting, and you're good to go. Um, so it makes it super easy to use. And I feel like you're not missing shots because you're not scuffling around with a camera bag when it's super organized. And like they've made it so it's so easy to be shooting quickly. Um, I think that's definitely would be a great tool for your work in street yeah. photography. I mean, it'd be perfect. Yeah. And so Cameron wanted to know, when you shoot black and white, are you shooting them in camera or are you converting them in post to black and white? And, That's a good question. And kind of a follow up to that. It, it, if, if it's in camera, do you use gels to give your black and white shots a color tone? Or, you know, is it just being done in post? Yeah. So basically, it's interesting. I just did a job for a, a tequila company recently and we shot at this beautiful hotel and you know, it's hard. They wanted only black and whites for the end usage of those images. So when I was started shooting in color, it was really hard for them to, to picture. So I ended up actually shooting JPEG plus raw in my uh, Z7 II. And I actually did um, little some, some in-camera sepia, just a slight sepia tone, black and whites in camera. So they would get both the JPEG um, so they could see a preview of what it would look like in black and white. And then I go in and actually when I edit the image, I'll edit in color, do all the scan in color, and then I will actually make them, you know, turn them into black and white in Photoshop or Luminar. And that's kind of how I tend to work. Like that's like the very last step is the black and white. And then I love to up the clarity quite a bit. Sometimes I'll even reopen it in raw and up, you know, up that clarity to really give it a lot of punch. So, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So now last, last question I, I have to know, and this is a, a personal question of my own. I just want to know, has, has Home Depot sponsored you yet? <laughs> oh, I can't help it. <laughs> no, I, I honestly, honestly, though, I love, I, I love that because I love that, especially like with, with, with the Nikita leaf blower, you know, that's right. such a, that's such a great idea. You know, so, so many people get fixated and and that's such a great usage of a tool that people can have lying around the house that most people don't think like oh let me take this out and let me I... it, you know, as, a, <laughs> as a proper as a tool and so i think that's that's a great way of reusing some of the things that we do have around the house we get yeah. so caught up in wanting to buy the latest and greatest stuff mm -hmm. and we wind up spending hundreds of thousands of dollars which is great there's nothing wrong with that and you know please feel free to spend them with bnh and you know on yeah. photo products and things like that but just simple things like that, that we have lying around the house. That's such a great creative way to, you know, reinvent what you might just have lying around in the shed. Yes, that's so true. Yeah, I always like to sort of balance it because I love all the new Nikon gear and Menfrotto gear and all these things. And it's, but it is also amazing how you can kind of do some DIY stuff and just go shopping at your local craft store and see what, you know, you can get creative with. So yeah, it's a, it's a good balance. <laughs> It's a, it's a good mix. It's a, it's a 50, yes. 50, this way, this way you're being conservative too. <laughs> yes. So true. So true. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, Dixie, it's been a, it's been a great pleasure to have you here, talk to you, you know, get some insight from you on, you know, how you go through your process and everything like that. Uh, for everybody joining us, if you want to shout out your Instagram again and how, how else people can follow along with your work and find yeah. you. Absolutely. It's um, under I am Dixie Dixon. And then I'll also reach out to one of the folks who just followed me on there um, and to send you a book. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, Dixie, I want to thank you again for being here. I want to thank Manfrotto uh, again for the whole entire day. Manfrotto, Lopro, Joby, you know, it's been a wonderful day. We've had a lot of fun. We've got some great information out there. We've had some laughs, I hope. 
<laughs> but you know, the, the time must come that we have to end the day. You know, there's only so many hours in the day. So I guess this will be the point when we do that. But I want to thank everybody for joining us today. Hopefully you learned a lot of great content and took something away from it. As always, this has been another rendition of the BMH Virtual Event Space. We'll catch you next time.